Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today I'm designing a battlecruiser. This is a scenario that was sent in by J.T. Hancock, one of the naval architects. It's 1938. You're assigned to head the Mikasa battlecruiser design project. Taking a page from the British, Japan has ordered three battlecruisers along their main battleships. Your higher-ups have given you multiple restrictions and requirements. First, you have a maximum displacement of 60,000 tons and a minimum top speed of 32 knots. Second, you have to choose between two main armaments, nine 18-inch guns or eight 16-inch guns. Third, due to the success of the Type 93 torpedo, you're required to have a minimum of one triple deck mounted, or sorry, trip one triple deck mounted torpedo launcher on each side of the ship. Lastly, you have to keep the build time of the ship to three years or less. Now that last thing is interesting. It's something that I don't come across very often. Now, it's going to, something that you can see in the designer. Uh, I'll show you in a second where that is. First, though, I would like to ask you guys to subscribe. Um, a lot of you are subscribed, but a whole bunch of you more actually are not. So just hit the subscribe button. I am on my way to 70,000 subscribers at this point. And just hitting the subscribe button would really help me out with that. Now, let's get to designing the Mikasa Battlecruiser class. All right, let's first rename her, the Mikasa. I have the option between the modern battle cruiser or the large cruiser. Now, I only have 51,000 tons to work with, so it's not like I'm gonna be able to get up to the 60,000 tons if I wanted to. Um, considering the design or the build time, it's currently already 25 months. If I slide this up, that takes another two months. So I have to keep this number below 36. Now, I'm first going to put on the main stuff and see what that does with the design time. Because I think it might not be as easy as I would like. Uh, gear 2, bulkheads, range none. Let's say we're going to do 35 knots. Design time, 27 months still. Okay. Barbettes are fine. Anti-torp. Oh, I don't need that much anti-torp. There aren't that many smaller ships around. Doesn't mean that the enemy is not going to be capable of lobbing some seriously big shells and causing flooding anyway. And that bigger capital ships don't carry torpedo tubes. But it's something that I would like to keep in mind. Oh, crap. Build time, 38 months. That is too long. Way too long, in fact. Anti-flooding does not seem to take time. Reinforced bulkheads does not take time. Is it the Citadel? 33 months. Now, on top of all this, I still have to work with uh, a difference between two armaments. Nine 18-inch guns or eight 16-inch guns. Now, nine 18-inch guns is more powerful, definitely. Also will take Probably more time to build. Um, it doesn't say anything about it. But I'm kind of assuming that it does. I would like to go with the 18s. Because what I'm up against is six United States battleships. And they are probably not going to be terribly eager for my battlecruisers to show up. We're going to have to do a whole lot of shifting around of stuff here. That's better. Build time, 33 months still. What if I go for less? There we go. Build time is sliding down pretty quickly now. Oh, don't worry about it. We can just move this. We can move that. Put the main tower on there. Done. Throw on a funnel. He said enthusiastically and then decided that the funnel couldn't fit. There. <clears throat> um, I cannot put one of those in the secondary tower, I imagine. No, not even close. Build time, 31 months, so we're still fine. What if I add stuff like radar and rangefinders? Still 31 months, excellent. I do want to go for an all-or-nothing citadel, 33 months. And of course, I'm not quite done with designing the ship, because I still have to put on torpedo launchers. Mount this thing slightly farther back. There we go. 
weight offset is not as bad. So we need a minimum of a triple side torpedo launcher or a triple deck mounted torpedo launcher per side. Now I'm going to go with uh, 21 inch and these are going to be oxygen fueled torpedoes. So they're going to be longer ranged and far less likely to get detected. Although, of course, the electrics are still better, at least in the sense that they are far harder to detect. Now these things can travel 21.8 kilometers. Considering that that range is so good, I'm going to go with a few more of these. Because I think I can make it work. I'm not sure how these would get launched, though. There. Now we throw out nine torpedoes. And by doing that, I'm hoping to be able to... Uh, well, not so much overwhelm the enemy, but at least force them to turn. And if you force them to turn, their maneuverability means that their guns cannot always be brought to target. So, I have my requirement of 9 18-inch guns. Um, I'm required to have a minimum of one triple deck-mounted launcher. Check. I have to keep the build time in uh, three years or less. We're looking at 33 months. And the weight offset is not a problem. So, so far, so good. Minimum speed, 35. And the requirement is 32, so that too is fine. Let's go for heavy shells. And make sure that these things load. Still 33 months. I think the ship length might have a bigger impact on how long it takes to build the ship than I initially expected. I am wondering if I can bring that down a bit more. Although, actually, no, I don't have to. Rather the opposite. Because I can go as long as 36 months. Which means that the ship will be longer. Not as easy to dodge torpedoes with. But, as I mentioned, there aren't that many around, or at least not that likely. And I'm hoping that with more displacement, I can also put on more armor. Which is something that battlecruisers usually sorely lack. Something else that they need is a bit of secondary guns. Uh, is it possible to set one of those... It's not quite what I was expecting. <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, could I do that on the bow? Is that tall enough? Because that thing needs to overlook the eight or the the eighteen inch gun. Yeah, that works. Very good. Now, lately, I've been getting a lot of questions. When is this game coming out? When can I access it? Well, you already can. Linked down below in the description is the, the well the site where you can download the game. It is not free, uh, so don't go complaining that, hold on, the game is not free. No, of course it's not. What game is? It's not free to play. Uh, just have a look at it. Keep in mind that you're buying into an alpha. Uh, no, I am not affiliated with the devs in any way, but I do like the game. And I think it has a lot of potential. But it is by no means finished. And, um, well, they're still working on it. It's pretty much that easy. Now, at this point, I have a pretty serious four weight offset. I don't mind a few percent, but this is getting nuts. So we're going to have to bring this thing in closer and then shovel the whole thing back. 30%. Some of the questions, by the way, that I get in the comments, I just don't understand. Um... I get people asking, what game is this? Well, I'm sorry, but you must be trolling because the title of the video contains the game. Um, the link down below in the description contains the link to the game. Um, <clears throat> I mention in the title what the game is called. And aside from all that, in the thumbnail there is usually Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. But still people are wondering, what name of the, what's the name of the game? Really? <laughs> Please. This is a, quite a nice setup for these 6-inch guns. Pretty good. Looks like they're super firing too. Alright, let's put on some 5s. And I think that that will do it for de destroyer defense. Unfortunately, no 8-inch guns overlooking the mains. It's too heavy. These things are 466 tons, and I still have to put on some armor. 
Build time is still 34 months, so I'm still satisfying that requirement. Uh, the torpedo set, set, set. Might be able to bring another one over there. Acoustics, yes, I would like some of that. Avoiding torpedoes is important. The plan with this battleship is to snipe. So my plan is to stay at range and prevent the enemy from being able to throw torpedoes my way anyway. Um, it means that belt armor is not as important. Deck armor more so, but it is really, really difficult to balance that. Oh, hold on. No, that's not the wrong one. Oh, this is the right one. We're still at 34 months. Good. There. 5% construction time. Now we're at 36 months. So that was part of the problem. It does give the ship more resistance though. Which is basically a flat out resistance against damage of any kind. But I'm 500 tons overweight. You know what? I'm going to drop down speed a bit. Hmm. A bit more then. 33. There we go. Because I still want my conning tower armored a bit more than that. It would also be lovely if I could armor up the turrets a bit more. But those things are very, very quick to get heavy. So I think we're... Well, we can manage about 9.2. But that's that's it. 15 inches on the conning tower. This is the problem. I have had heavy cruisers which had more armor than these things. But then again, those heavy cruisers were not exactly sporting 18-inch guns. So, um, enough talk on the design. I think that the Mikasa class is ready. I just, just need to sink six battleships with her. Fortunately, I get three of these. All right, here we are in the battle. I decided to go ahead and check out what the formations were like and sort them out. We have the battlecruisers Minami, Mikasa and Fuji. These guys are going to be followed around by my heavy cruisers. Yakushi, Kasa, Furutaka and Asama. These heavy cruisers sport some torpedoes. They have a mere 3 per side, but they do range out to 22 kilometers, so that's really nice. I'm not going to launch them just yet. Lots of firepower. Eight... Uh, sorry, 8-inch guns, and they have 15 of those, backed up by a lot of 3-inch and 2-inch guns. So at shorter range, potent against destroyers. Turning circle, however, makes them less suitable against destroyers. Standard amount of bulkheads should keep them alive. Sonar 3. So, well, they might not be able to turn very quickly, but at least they might get enough warning for enemy torpedoes. Then we have light cruisers, Tsushima, Kiso, Soya. These guys have maximum bulkheads. Very well protected light cruisers, which interestingly sport a lot of torpedoes. This is 20 torpedo launchers of the quintuple type, so uh, 20 inch, 9.8 kilometer. They're all going to have the same range pretty much 9.8, 9.8, 9.8. .8. Yep, uh, they're all 20 inchers. These guys have a lot. They got per side 10 launchers, uh, 14 launchers, 17 launchers. So I basically am running with um, a light torpedo cruiser, which, well, might be able to forward fights with destroyers, but anything that looks like a cruiser is going to be a big problem for it. The plan with these, let's set them to normal, normal formation. Um, I want them to head towards the enemy. And then we have a couple of destroyers, uh, Marusame, Onami, Natsushi, sorry, Natsushio and uh, Yudachi. Yudachi, by the way, needs to join the DD Div. Torpedo range, not great, 9.9. .9. Survivability, not great. Speed, pretty good. Uh, the light cruisers turn faster than these things, though, at full speed. They only have Krupp 1 armor. But then again, for a destroyer, that doesn't matter at all, because they generally don't sport armor to begin with. So, let's put these guys to battle and also have a look at what the Americans brought. These are their battleships, armed with nine 17-inch guns per. Yikes. That is six battleships armed with that stuff. I am not necessarily a fan, shall we say. My torpedo tubes are not allowed to fire just yet. 
There are heavy cruisers. These guys are packing torpedo launchers, but only four. Four per side. And backed up by 15 six-inch guns, which you can see here on the left. You cannot see the identification yet over here on the right. But over on the left, you can see the gun's accuracy, and you can see that they have 15 six-inch guns, 10 threes, and another 18 twos. And finally, their smaller ships, destroyers. What we know is that they have eight four-inch guns and a couple of two-inch, but I don't see enough of them to be able to tell you... Oh, sorry, there it is. Um, yeah, of course they carry torps. One launcher there. You're hiding another launcher on your stern. Right there. So about seven torpedo launchers per destroyer, but they only have two of those. Now, I am a bit nervous about this encounter. Because I'm thinking that those battleships might not have the accuracy. Because they are older than my ships, what they do have is volume of fire. And that volume of fire could pretty easily wreck my ships. I do have all of these 18-inch guns. And with my tech advantage, they are more accurate than the Americans. There we go. We've already inflicted a nice chunk of damage. But battle cruisers like these, they cannot take a hit. If you so much as sneeze at them in the wrong direction, they have a tendency to blow up. Uh, if you throw a 17-inch shell at them, they're definitely going to blow up if they hit. Now, I'm hoping that these guys can clear the... Yeah, there we go. The Americans are heading away from me, which means I'm unable to launch my torpedoes. But it also makes me a bit safer, because it means that their accuracy is dwindling even more. And this guy has already taken, I think, 20-25% of its structural integrity damage. So that's good. Oh, one of my heavies got hit. Whew. Pretty bad. Her buoyancy is very quickly getting restored. Ish. Just not as much as I would hope. Whoa, we have, we've hit them again? Oh yeah, they're starting to flood now. <clears throat> Good. The DDs I want to send in, and the light cruisers I also want to send in. There. Because they are doing... Well, they're not doing great at 28 knots, effectively 26, but they can still close in and potentially uh, disrupt this whole formation. Because that's what I was on about before. If you, can cert if you can use your torpedoes and make these ships turn, it makes them that much less likely to be able to bring all guns to bear. So that's the plan. And so far, I am not disappointed about the amount of damage that we have done. This guy is uh, pretty roughed up. Oh, they lost line of sight. Well, not so much line of sight, but they lost sight of my battle cruiser. This guy accidentally got hit. I think this battleship is falling back. Too heavily damaged. Working on turning back in the formation. And my accuracy is immediately falling pretty steeply. So we're going to target a new battleship here. Because this guy is going to be behaving unpredictably... And I don't want to lose that accuracy. Range from the lights. 23 versus my... T oh, my 9.8 kilometer range. Never mind, I confused these guys. Uh, with the heavy cruisers. The DDs also have that 9.9 .9 inch range. Now it's the heavy cruisers that have 22 kilometer range. So let's see if we can send in the heavies a bit closer. They don't need to be that much closer, but just enough to ensure that they can launch the torpedoes. I thought that this battleship was going to fall out of formation, but it's not. That means we might be able to hit it. No longer flooding, no longer burning. Salvo was already airborne against the other battleship. Oof, so close. Looks like their destroyers are still on screening mode. They're not likely to engage. Now these guys have a pretty small amount of larger secondary guns. 
And by larger secondary guns, I mean 6 inch, 7 inch, 8 inch. They don't have those. Which means that the DDs, even though they need to get to 9 kilometers or less, they might have a chance. Much more so than some of the other ship classes I've suffered from in the past. It's just that this destroyer... Or what was it, a light? Shit, it's a light cruiser. Heavy cruisers. Uh, I need you guys to hold off for a second. We need the heavy cruisers to be working away against the light cruisers. Because these cannot intercept my ships. Vicksburg and unidentified second ship. Torpedo launchers ranging 12-8, so they outrange me. That battleship is being seriously mistreated. And it looks like one of their guns is out. That's good. This gun also took a chunk of damage. Look at this guy. That poor turret. I mean, not so poor that I really feel sorry for it. Because it is a 17-inch gun. That is meant to take my ships out. But hey, it is sorry to see a ship like that go. Turn back. All of you. Yeah, they got the right idea. The challenge is hitting a light cruiser that's at speed of about 30 knots inside of a smokescreen. Oh, you destroyed another main gun? No, this main gun wasn't effectively destroyed yet. Soon, though. Oh, crap. One of my got hit. <sighs> Ow. Wisconsin is flooding again. Few bulkheads. That's even better. Means that those guys are very susceptible to torpedoes. Not so much because the torpedoes will do that much damage, but because they just flood the ship out. And that's exactly what I want. They do have anti-flood uh, 2 and anti-torp 4. So they have a very serious torpedo blister. But I'm hoping it's something we can work around of sorts. They're not in torpedo range. Crap. It's not like I can wait these guys out either. They carry way too much ammunition for that. Uh, new target, Illinois. She's nice and steady. I'm gonna turn again slightly. Damage to, the <laughs> to another main gun. See, the Wisconsin is now easy prey because she cannot keep up with her formation anymore. Meaning she'll lag behind. And as she does that, she becomes even easier to kill. Surprisingly, however, it is my heavy cruisers that are dropping the ball here. They're not really doing any kind of damage that I was expecting them to do. Accuracy of 0.5? You got a Coincidence 2 rangefinder. Not surprising you can't hit anything. Because in your case, it's quite literally a coincidence if you actually hit the guy. So that explains why... Ooh. <laughs> why they're not taking any damage to that light cruiser over there. We got over here a destroyer ranging about 11 on the torpedoes. Oh, it's not that bad. I'm well outside of their range. Can a Tsushima hit? Coincidence 2. You guys as well? I think the Yakushi is now the focal point of the enemy attack. Yeah. They have switched their fire to a heavy cruiser. And considering the Yakushi is the lead one... Yeah, there we go. These definitely attracting attention. Oh, Vicksburg has been hit. Very good. Very, very good. 19 clicks out. It's time to set up manual targets for these guys. In case you want to know how to do that, pay attention. You click a ship, and then over on the right-hand side, once you're hovering over a target, a menu appears. Set target. Right-click, 
uses all weapons. In this case, I want to set the torpedoes only, so I'm going to do shift right click. I'm going to do the Casa on Delaware, the Furutaka on the Oklahoma, and the Asama versus the West Virginia. And now this group has four different torpedo targets, as indicated by those dotted lines that are moving towards the targets. I'm going to set them to normal torpedo attack, and now they're allowed to launch their torps. They might not do it though, because some of their targets are moving away. And that means that by the time that the torpedo gets there, it will be out of steam. So we're going to have to move the heavy cruisers a bit closer in. The Vicksburg is toast. Wisconsin is still lagging behind, as predicted. We still have a decent amount of ammo. Oh, Illinois lost her gun. That's the first gun on the Illinois. But the second turret I destroyed so far. 13.7 inch on the turret. Okay. So those turrets are not... Ooh. Ooh. Not that well protected. And I think the DD... What are you taking fire from? Oh, from the 8 inch guns. From the heavies. Well done. That destroyer is... Almost done for. Minimum bulkheads. Huh. It's that time again, huh? Okay. Their battleships have few bulkheads. Their destroyers have minimum. Their light cruisers have minimum. It should be pretty easy to flood them out. All of them, in fact. Alright, you guys are now close enough. I think. Yakushi, range to your target. 17, which is well inside of the torpedo range. So the Yakushi is now allowed to fire her torps. And in fact, I'm going to do that aggressively. So that even if they don't have a perfect solution, they can still launch their torpedoes. Because there is not just one target, there are more. Illinois might be done for. Light cruiser status. Perfect timing on the smoke. There goes the destroyer. Well done. Well done. Now, the light cruisers are about to be in range with the torpedoes against Wisconsin. So that's the nice bat, nice big target for the lights. The challenge will be to keep the lights alive for long enough. Stereoscopic 3 rangefinder, generation 1 radar. Now they might be older, but they're not entirely harmless, these battleships. Chance to pen the battleship with the main guns is 4%. Fortunately, that's not something I'm relying on here. Illinois is almost done for. But I'm going to switch my fire to the Massachusetts with all of the battle cruisers. Because this guy might not be dead yet, but he's slow. So the torpedoes from the light cruiser should have a pretty easy time intercepting them. And I also have my heavy cruisers, which are still moving into position. And they have sent tor torpedoes, or at least one of them has. The Kasa hasn't yet. Oh shit, Tsushima's dead. Huh. I was expecting Furutaka to actually get something done, but no joy. And you got hit by a 17 inch shell, didn't you? Yeah. See, not exactly harmless. They will mess you up. Light cruisers, you are in torpedo range, but the target's moving away from you. Don't launch yet. DDs, 9.9 .9 incoming torpedo. Origin, light cruiser, New Haven. DDs, hard to starboard. You're torping the battleship. That's not a terrible idea. You turp that one, you turp the Illinois, and you Dutch also turps Illinois. That is, if you ever get into range. Look at that, though. Battlecruiser 17 in shell hits light cruiser bow belt extended penetration for 2,000 damage. Massachusetts taking a fair amount of damage. No guns have been knocked out yet, though.
Now, in case you're wondering why are you not taking out one target entirely? Well, my motivation here is that these guys are very uh, easy to flood because of those few bulkheads. So if I can slow them down, I make, um, yeah, I'm making it easier for the destroyers and the light cruisers, all of whom carry torpedo launchers, to come in, ouch, to come in and do their damage. The thing is, at this rate, there won't be any light cruiser who can still deliver torpedoes. Because uh, there isn't a light cruiser left. Who's firing at the Converse? A heavy cruiser. Was that actually your main target? Yeah, it is. 9.2 damage taken. <laughs> 5.8 damage done, or 5.9k done. The difference is because I just ate a torpedo that did 4,500 damage. Marusame, you might need to do a bit of zigzagging here, buddy. Although you already launched your torps, it's just up to the rest of your group. Yeah, none of these guys have launched yet. Have you launched? No? Might want to get on that. Massachusetts is limping away. New target for the battle cruiser is the Delaware. Again, motivation is to slow her down. And then to sink her either with the heavy cruisers or the lights. Maybe, well, the light singular, because most of them are dead. Let's turn you back. Torpedoes out. They are getting pretty heavily chunked at this point. And the rest of them are still out of torpedo range. We're going to have to pull you guys slightly back. Just let the battle unfold. Still got plenty of shells. Whoa. Mikasa, speed 19 knots. You're not on a loose formation, so what's your excuse? I mean, the battle cruisers is loose ships. So now the Mikasa is wanting to speed up again. Yeah, there she goes. There's still something about the speed, which is curious about the battle sh uh, the battle cruisers because none of those were in the uh, screening mode. Which is something that has been shown to uh, cause problems with the formations. Illinois might eat some torpedoes and is probably unable to dodge. Because she has a damaged rudder and two damaged engines. Although, oh really? She found a gap. DDs, smoke up. Light cruiser status. The Soya is still alive. Has, however, not been able to finish off her intended target. It's not going as well as I would like. We set all the battle cruisers to engage the very heavily wounded Illinois. Because she needs to get finished off. We need to take at least some of the guns out of the fight. Heavy cruisers have also been taking damage. Some more than others. And that DD went all the way from low buoyancy f back to full. So she's been doing a hell of a job pumping the water back out. And she's coming back in as well. How heavy are these things? 55,000 tons. Okay. Accuracy. 4%. I'm hoping I have enough shells for this fight. Because that could be a problem. Oh dear. Speaking of. You're at a torpedo range. And the Soya is flooding. I could be in, problem, in, in trouble here. Come on, Illinois. Take a hint. Start flooding. 
Because I've been working pretty hard against you, but so far, you're still here. Yudachi. The problem is the lack of torpedo range. Mikasa that way. Minami that way. And Fiji that way. I won't be able to bring all guns to bear, but at least I'll be able to chase them down. And at this point, fair enough. I think the tactic of trying to slow them down and then killing them off with torpedoes didn't work. Should have just killed them off outright. No torpedoes in the water there, so we're going to turn this div around. We are kind of in torpedo range, but the Oklahoma and the Delaware and the, well, the rest of them, everyone is limping away. So we're just going to have to sort of chase them down and hope that I can do something with the torps. Converse is burning up. Illinois is on fire, but not the flooding that I'm looking for. I have slightly less than half of my munition left. I started with 900 per battle cruise and I'm down to 393. Damage to the main tower, flooding. Buoyancy 7%. It's bounding up and down with 7%. Crap. Three percent. Finish her. There's nothing left of that thing. There we go. Target Delaware, target Oklahoma, and uh, target Wisconsin. New Haven could have been chunked over there. Simply by being in the firing line of the Illinois. More or less the same position. Converse is finally down. Excellent work. Heavy cruiser status. Moving towards the targets. Target, I think, should be Delaware, but Delaware is moving away. Making it more difficult to get a good torpedo hit. Anami's down. Soya's down. Udachi just launched her torps. Into the uh, Wisconsin here. This is probably going to be a pretty close fight. Yes, I've done amount of, or a nice amount of damage. I've sunk one battleship. Seriously wounded a second. And the other two have been... Well, the other... No, Virginia is still fine. I think that's the only full health battleship that they have left. But I've lost a lot more smaller ships than they have. Because my tactic didn't work out. Wisconsin turning away from the threat. She's already dead, buddy. Not the problem. Natsushio. Out of torpedo range. Well, maybe the DDs can still function in a distractionary role. Because some of these are attracting shell fire from the battle cruisers, which works. Just make sure that those shells are not going to land anywhere near the battle, uh, battle cruisers that I have. Okay, excellent damage so far as Wisconsin. She might flood out now. Let's hope that that works. Yeah, 1%. 0.6. Done. That's another one down. We're down to a third of our ammunition. This is getting concerning. You're targeting a light cruiser now? I don't think so, buddy. We're going to finish off the Delaware together. Because the New Haven is a perfect target for the heavy cruisers. And Oklahoma is something that we can potentially land torps against. My battle cruisers also come with torpedoes. And I might be able to use those at this point, at least from Fiji. Oh! Maybe I cannot use them from Fiji anymore. 
Because this is exactly the problem. If I get too close to the battle cruiser, I get exactly what I deserve. And the Fiji gets her ammunition blown up. This is the problem with battle cruisers. You can put some really nice guns on them. They're excellent for mobility, but they cannot take a hit. The amount of times that battle cruisers have detonated in my face is getting out of hand. It means that I effectively lost nine of my uh, 27 18 inch guns. You know what? I think I'm going to have to turn away from here. Torpedo when ready. Port side torpedoes are away. And now we're going to target the West Virginia with the mains. Because I think that Delaware might die soon. And even if she does not, then the ricochet angle is too high. Meaning that my shells will just bounce off. I thought I had torps in the Oklahoma. Because the heavy cruisers are moving towards there. The Oklahoma has such a level of armor that the 8-inch guns from the heavy cruisers can barely pen it. They can rake the deck with shell fire, doing damage to secondary tower, maybe secondary guns. But short of launching torpedoes or even ramming the target, there is not much that I can do. There's Mikasa. Minami is down to 225 shells. West Virginia is still full health. We just hit the Massachusetts a bit. You see the torps? Yeah, they're here. Means that the Delaware is not at risk. Crap. Uh, Mikasa, turn hard over to port. I want to see if we can get a better firing angle on the Delaware, because she is going to ricochet everything. How are my DDs? Not terrible, actually. Natsushio just launched another set. Yudachi might be able to do the same. The heavy cruisers seem to be mostly ignored by the battleships. Yes, they're taking shell fire from 6-inch guns. But if that's the only thing... Then it's not that bad yet. Cease fire on the torps. With this formation, I wouldn't be surprised if we have some torpedoes in the water at all points. I'm not wrong. I'm a bit concerned about Mikasa here charging in, though. She's at 11 kilometers, which means that those 17 inch guns by now are getting really accurate. And as we've seen, all it takes is one hit to blow up the ammunition supply. Down to 186 shells. There we go. Delaware is out. Oklahoma is the new target. And you starboard launch against Oklahoma. Those torpedoes might prove to be decisive in sinking them. Now, I told the heavy cruisers to not launch any more because I'm hoping that the torpedoes from the destroyers and the heavy cruisers can do some damage against these. But it looks like they just turned. Look at the wake over here. West Virginia is definitely going for a heavy turn. 159 shells left. Sink three battleships, two of which wounded. This is gonna cut it really close. Fortunately, I can still fall back to my torpedo launchers. And as we have seen previous, the enemy ships are not that good at detecting me. So maybe I can capitalize on that and stay just outside of their detection range and launch torpedoes at them. Maybe I can pull that off. Oklahoma is getting butchered from every which way. Battle cruisers are still okay. Flooding. 16% buoyancy, 14, 12, 10. She's detected torpedoes. 
but it doesn't matter anymore. She's done. Good. Very good. Two battleships left alive. Heavy cruisers bravely charging into the enemy. Where West Virginia and Massachusetts are still behaving unpredictably. Even though I'm not a fan, it's, it's good on them. The more unpredictable you are, the less likely you are to get hit by torpedoes. There we go. Fire damage. In this case, I am going to focus fire. Because I would rather have one more dead battleship than two half healthy ones. Look at the turning circle on those. That is impressive. Target the Massa. Look at these guys turn. Are they aware of my torpedoes or something? Range less than eight. Furutaka is still reloading her launcher. Uh, the DDs might be able to pitch in, even though they're in a pretty poor state. Rudder damaged and flooding on Massachusetts. With the amount of ammo I have, I should be just about fine. It's cutting it close, though. But if we win this, then we've sunk six American battleships. For the price of a couple of smaller ships and one battle cruiser. Another fire. Do not launch. Do not launch. Charge the battleship. I know that's something that I do quite often, but in this case, it's probably my best bet. Especially since I'm running low. Their damage done is still higher than mine, though. But then again, if you hit destroyers and light cruisers with high explosive, you get very, very high damage numbers. Now, these torpedoes are not very easy to spot, but still pretty easy to see, especially for the West Virginia with her Sonar 3. So, in order to get a hit, I'm going to have to get pretty close. She is down to 66%. Massachusetts is flooding. Very good. 53, 50%, 48. Come on. Just a few battleships left. 30%. We have 60 shells left here and only 39 on the Mikasa. We're really cutting it close. She's gone. Okay, West Virginia last. West Virginia potentially sees the threat coming of the impending doom from the torpedo attack from Yakushi. It's not quite sticking around for that nonsense. Uh, yep, she instantly detected the torpedoes, turning to port, which is what I wanted her to do. I was trying to push her back to port, so the firing angle for the Mikasa is better. There we go, two floodings. And the same can be said for the Minami over here. She's pushing in. And the torpedoes don't hit, but there we go. We got her. Job done. Victory to the Japanese. Uh, yes, at the expense of some more ships than I initially had hoped. But the job was done regardless. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon for another video.